Father, that we would encounter you, God, even if there's people in the room that have never encountered the tangible presence of Almighty God, his joy, his peace, his love, oh, his love. When we encounter his love, there's nothing like encountering God's love. Lord, release your love tonight, God, in this room, that every single person in this room, regardless of where they came from, what they've ever done, that they would have an impartation, Lord, tonight of your love in their hearts, that they would know you and they would honor you and they would be undone by your spirit, God. We just thank you, Lord God, for tonight. We thank you for the jewels and the treasures of the word, Lord God, that you're going to unveil tonight to all of us in the room. Something we've never seen before, Lord. With something we've never heard before, God. That you have treasures, Lord. Treasures, treasures, treasures to release tonight, God. I just pray in Jesus' name, Lord God, that you have your way tonight, God. So Holy Spirit, come in power, Lord God. Signs, wonders, miracles, the miracle of salvation, the miracle of the baptism of the Holy Spirit, God, that people would encounter you like never before, that your peace would rest on them tonight, God that your peace would rest upon them, that it would be so tangible, you would be so tangible, that you would speak to people's hearts tonight in this room, God. Just even about their destiny, their calling, God, that they would know that you would give them boldness tonight, God, to live for you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> Welcome, everybody. Welcome. Everybody can take a seat. If you don't have to, you can lay on the floor. <laughs> you know, keep it a... Just keep your, the mind and the heart fixed on Jesus tonight. We're going to be talking about the Holy Spirit because He is the one that reveals Jesus to you. He is the one that brings the spirit of wisdom and revelation of the knowledge of Jesus. He is the one that reveals truth in God's word. I have a lot to talk about tonight about the Holy Spirit, but Jesus said, there's one coming when I leave this place. There is one coming that is the same as me. There is one coming to the earth that's going to live with us forever. So forever, even when we leave here, we're going to have the spirit of truth. The spirit of truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and nobody comes to the Father except through me. So when he left this earth, he sent the spirit of truth to give us more truth, to say that there's no other way there's, no, there's nothing else, no lies that we have to believe because the Holy Spirit is the one that reveals truth to you. Now the Bible, like I say every time we meet, is living, active, and powerful and sharper than a double-edged sword. It divides between the spirit and the soul and the joints and the marrow and judges the attitudes of our heart. So the word being alive, the word on the pages in the Bible, being alive. What makes the Word of God alive? It's the Holy Spirit that breathes on this Word. We all need the Holy Spirit. Yes. Now I'm going to talk about the role of the Holy Spirit tonight. I'm going to talk a lot about Jesus and the Holy Spirit. How the Holy Spirit came. The role of the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament. The role of the Holy Spirit in the New Testament. The role of the Holy Spirit under the covenant that we're all under. And we need to know the Holy Spirit intimately and passionately. The closer we get to know Him, the more we know about Him, Jesus, 
the Holy Spirit will reveal more and more jewels of the Word. So every time we open the Word of God, we have to open the Word and invite the Holy Spirit. We don't just open the Word and start reading. We have a conversation immediately when we open the Word with the Holy Spirit. Now, you know, God knows our secret place. So wherever we are, we're reading and we're spending time in the Word. He'll breathe on the pages. But when you invite the Holy Spirit to have His way in your heart and in your mind, and in just hit, having a miracle right as you open the Word, because the Word of God is the power. The power is in the Word, and without the Holy Spirit living in you, you will not understand the Word. The Word will be just like mundane. The Word will be boring. You need the Holy Spirit for Amen. it to bring life to your heart and your mind. Amen. Well, that's just... <laughs> what came off of my heart, you know. Um, this is Revelation 19 Ministries. Um, for anybody that's new or doesn't know me, I'm, I'm Tracy Weiss. And uh, I birthed Revelation 19 Ministries about a year ago. And uh, like Weezy talked about my website and everything, you can go on there. You can read blogs that are Holy Spirit loaded with truth. If you just need a little 10-minute sermon, click on that blog and you'll get one. You know, because the Holy Spirit is alive in me. And so when I write or I'm speaking, just like He's alive in, in you, you're, you're speaking truth. You have power in your words. I mean, we're, we're, we have dynamite living inside of us. Amen. So when I was deciding, my husband and I deciding on what to name this ministry, you know, every single thing that I put in Google, somebody else already had it. <laughs> Truthfully, I was like, oh, Lord, I want just something. And this ministry, for 13 years, even before I was a, a, a Revelation 19 Ministries, it was all about God's love, the love of Jesus to me. Like, I could believe when, when Jesus revealed himself to me so powerfully, this the love and the kindness of, of, of Jesus just blew me away. And I thought, God has called me to prepare the bride of Christ to get ready for the second coming of Christ. And that's in Revelation 19. So we have the second coming of Christ, that the church isn't asleep, that the Holy Spirit is alive in each one of us, that he's on our mind, he's on our hearts, he's on our agenda every single day. Because when we leave this earth, the only thing we take with us is our spirit, our soul, and the Holy Spirit. Because remember what I just said, it's in John 16. The Holy Spirit will remain in you forever. So when you leave here, the Holy Spirit is going to go with you. So anyone that is, does not have the Holy Spirit living in them, we need the Holy Spirit. The only way we're going to get to heaven is the Holy Spirit. These aren't my words. These are the words of Jesus. We need the Holy Spirit. We're going to learn tonight way more about the Holy Spirit. If you know anyone that does not have the Holy Spirit, it's a desperate message to go out. Everybody needs the Holy Spirit. Now, there's two parts of that Holy Spirit. Not there's two parts of the Holy Spirit, but when you get born again... When you get born of God's Spirit, that's the Holy Spirit that comes in to live inside of you. Now, I want to tell you something. In 2003, I was diagnosed with leukemia. I got on my knees. I surrendered to the Lord. I had a, a mighty encounter with Almighty God in the room, bright light. God was speaking to my heart. And I want to tell you, my life has been changing. <laughs> That was going almost 14 years ago. The Holy Spirit came in my room and flooded my room with light. Not only in my room, my heart was filled with light. The revelation of Jesus. The revelation of Jesus. If we do not have the Holy Spirit in us, we will not have the revelation of Jesus Christ. What he did when he was on earth, it says 
that the Holy Spirit, I'm going to go into the Bible in a minute, the Holy Spirit reveals Jesus to us. The Holy Spirit reveals everything that Jesus said when he walked on the earth. The Holy Spirit reveals to us who Jesus is in the future. Coming back as the, as the soon coming king, the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, like it says in Revelation 19. He's coming back, the word of God written on his thigh. Amen. He's coming back. He's coming back. You have to talk to the people around you, the people that are in your sphere of influence. God is counting on you to tell people you need the Holy Spirit. Because if not, then Jesus will be boring to you. If you do not have the Holy Spirit, you will not want to glorify Jesus. Because the number one role of the Holy Spirit is to glorify Jesus. So when he lives in us, we want to worship. We want to glorify the King of Kings, the Judge, the Bridegroom, you know, the Bread of Life. We want to exalt him because the Holy Spirit, God, the Holy Spirit lives in us. This is just prior to being baptized in the Holy Spirit. I sat in my living room for many hours a day when I thought I was going to die, maybe by the end of the week. But I will tell you something. People will say, don't you need the baptism of the Holy Spirit to be on fire? No, you don't. I was on fire telling everybody about Jesus, and I was not baptized in the Holy Spirit. I was hungry. I was thirsty. I was hungry to know him before my life on earth was going to end. I was hungry. There's a hunger and a thirst that develops inside of us. Jesus talked about it in John 6, the bread of life. He talked about the Holy Spirit, rivers of living water. He talked about in John 4, the well, when he had that encounter. The Samaritan woman had a, an encounter with Jesus. It was the well. What he was trying to say is you need living water. You need living water. But what do we need first? We need that well welling up in us for our own growth in Christ. When you're baptized in the Holy Spirit, you have power and boldness to go out to witness that you won't be ashamed. If somebody comes up and says, points a gun at your head and say, renounce Jesus or die like that precious young girl did in that college, okay, she had the power to overcome. Like we said last week, the first two weeks of this revival was all about the blood of Jesus. What we said last week is that you need the, a revelation of the blood of Jesus to fall in love with him, to fall in love with him. Nobody, but nobody will ever do for any of us what Jesus did. Amen. No one. No one. It's so powerful, but you need the Holy Spirit to bring life, life. So this Samaritan woman heard that Jesus was the Messiah. She just heard Jesus was the Messiah. She didn't even hear about the second coming of him at that time. She, she just heard, like her heart was awakened at that point. She got born again, meaning that Jesus was speaking to her about this living water. She knew that there was something different about him. She knew he was the Messiah that they read about in the Old Testament. He, he breathed on her. He spoke life to her. But God, Almighty God, opened up her heart to Jesus. What about in John 20? John 20, 20. When, the, when Jesus rose from the dead, was it when he rose from the dead, John 20, and he breathed on the, uh, the, the disciples. He breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. Shh. They got born again. But he knew that Peter didn't deny him. He knew the people did not have power, even that walk with Jesus. They knew that they needed something greater. They were to go up to the upper room and wait for the Holy Spirit to come upon them. But he said, shh. He breathed on them. How did it start out in Genesis 1? The breath of God. 
The Spirit of God was hovering over the earth. And then Adam, born, made out of dust, the breath of God, the breath of God. We need to be born again. Because of the fall, which we all know, we didn't have the Holy Spirit. It's not something that, well, I don't know, I might want the Holy Spirit, I might not. We need the Holy Spirit. You will learn so much about Jesus when you have the Holy Spirit. So powerful. So we came up with the Revelation 19 Ministries because it's about the bride and the bridegroom. It's about the bride and the bridegroom. Jesus is the bridegroom and we are the bride. We are saying, come Lord Jesus. The bride and the spirit says, come Lord Jesus. We have to be... It says he's coming back for those who are eagerly waiting for him. It's so powerful. Well, I have to get my Bible out so because I want to go and read uh, a lot in here tonight because you want to know the Holy Spirit, right? You want to know who he is. He's the comforter. He's the counselor. He is the one that reveals Jesus to us. If we don't have the Holy Spirit, we will read the Bible and be in church and hear it here. Our lives will never change. If you see people that their lives don't change, it's because the power of God hasn't touched their heart. The Holy Spirit hasn't breathed on their heart to bring them into revelation of who Jesus is. I'm just telling you the truth tonight. This is what the Spirit of Truth says. He, um, let's go to 2 Corinthians. No, no, before we go there, we're going to go read a few verses Go to Titus. I want to, what I want you to do is I want you to see the way that the Holy Spirit reveals himself to us in these verses, even if you read them one million times. Well, that's probably pretty many times. <laughs> even if you read them a hundred times or hundreds of times, let the Lord wash over your heart tonight with some of these verses. So powerful. I read the word continually, and I never get bored and tired of the verses that bring our hearts alive to who Jesus is. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So we're going to go, and I was going to, um, so Titus chapter 3. Titus is such an incredible, incredible book. It's got only a few small chapters, but I'm going to start. It's chapter 3. It's just going to be talking about the Holy Spirit. We get born again, and God's Spirit comes to live inside of us. This is not boring. This is exciting. How many people are around us? that don't have the Holy Spirit, that aren't born again, that aren't going to heaven until one of us comes to them and tells them, you need to be born of God so that when you leave this earth, you are in heaven. Here we go. Verse 4. But when the kindness and the love of God our Savior appear, He saved us. Not because of righteous things we have done, but because of His mercy. This matches with Ephesians 2.4. Because His mercy and kindness. Not our good works. Not our, it's His mercy. We need His mercy. We need His kindness to save us. He saved us through the washing of rebirth and the renewal by the Holy Spirit. There it is. The renewal of rebirth. We must be born again to enter the kingdom of God. It does not happen. Jesus told Nicodemus, which was a, an incredible man of God, but he needed to be born of God. He said, oh no, three times he said, oh no, you need to be born of, get, born of God. First you're born, flesh is births flesh, and then God births his spirit. Spirit births spirit whom he poured out on us generously through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that having been justified by grace, we're justified by God's grace. 
Whenever I see the word grace, you know what I put in there? Jesus. You can read all the way through the Bible. When you see God's grace, put the word Jesus in and you'll see all he's done for you. We might become heirs and have the hope of eternal life. So there's a rebirth, there's a renewal. Right up in, right before that, because the book's open here. Look up here at Titus 2, 11. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. We need to be saved. It's not about church attendance. We need to be saved by Almighty God. He is the one that decides whether we come into the kingdom. We will all stand before of him on that glorious day of judgment. That when we don't have to look back and say, Shh, I missed it. I never got to know him intimately and passionately. I never shared him with a family member or my next door neighbor. We will stand before him eyes to eyes, eyes of burning fire. Like he's going to be burning his love in our hearts. Well done, good and faithful servant. That's what he's going to say. It's going to be so glorious. We all have that day and we're not going as a family. I tell my kids, I tell other people, you're not getting in on my coattails. You're responsible. Once you're older than a child, you are responsible to be born of God. And the only way you can get born of God, born of Jesus, born of the Spirit, is by repentance. When you repent and realize that you need Him, when you see that I need Jesus, I cannot get in on my good works. I cannot get in on my church service. But we got to know that when the Almighty God comes to live in our hearts and He fills us with living water, that well that's in John 4, our life changes. Now everybody might be born again in this room. But I know that there's everybody in this room knows somebody that's not born of God. And this message is supposed to impact your heart tonight of who the comforter, the counselor is, the revealer of Jesus Christ, all the treasures of the word. I love this. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to the life self-controlled and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age. Well, we wait for the blessed hope. See, we're waiting for something. We're waiting. We're, we're having the Holy Spirit fire us up day in and day out and say, get ready, Tracy. Get ready for that great and glorious day. The day that he appears, whether he takes us out of here in a twinkling of an eye or whether we wait till we pass and our soul and spirit is gone, locked in with Jesus. This is good news. This is good news tonight. This is good news because Jesus has revealed himself to all of us tonight. Jesus, we are the lucky ones. We have people that we talk to day and night about the Lord Jesus Christ that has no interest. They are not interested. They, they have their own agenda. Nobody, anybody that does not have the Holy Spirit will never glorify Christ. See, the Holy Spirit is the glorifier. He's the glorifier in me and in you. He will bring out of you what you have in the Word of God. It's him. I am just the vessel up here tonight. You are just the vessel. The Holy Spirit is speaking through me using my voice in power. That's what he's doing tonight. Amen. Jesus said in John 6, 63, My words are spirit and life. And when we preach the gospel and share the love of Christ, our words are spirit and life. we got to believe it. Even if yes. somebody rejects us, it's okay. Jesus said, if you've been rejected, you belong to me. Yes. I got a lot of rejection. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> We're waiting for the blessed hope. When the Holy Spirit lives in you, you get up and you go, I am so saved. No matter what's coming at you, do you, do you want to know such a glorious thing about God? Like, Jesus could have saved us, and then we would never encounter his presence. Like, say we never encountered him. But God was so glorious in his goodness and kindness. He, said, he says that when we praise him, he floods us with his presence. Amen. Like, he inhabits the praises of his people. It's his people inhabits. 
not the world. The world is waiting to get into the kingdom. We've been translated from the kingdom of light, God's dear son, into the kingdom. We've been translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light, into God's dear son's kingdom. See, we all live under the kingdom rules, the kingdom principles, the kingdom mindsets. That's what we live under. We don't live under the other people's rules in their life, in their lifestyle. We live in a new kingdom here. Yes. The Holy Spirit reveals it to us. But this is the most amazing part. Think about the law. We're going to go here tonight. The law, they were so busy trying to do good. You know, do good. I got to do the law. I, I, I can't, you know, sin. I can't do this. They had no power. See, they had to come to the prophets. And the apostles, the prophets of the Old Testament, they had to go to the prophets. The Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit rested on the prophets and gave them the word to give to the people. But Jesus Christ. See, we don't, but Jesus, he's so sweet. Now, we don't look to the prophets. Yes, there's prophets and apostles here on earth that got great words for us that God's still speaking to. But Hebrews 1 says that we now learn everything through His Son, through His Spirit. Amen. We don't have to stand and do all these rituals day in and day out when the blood of all those animals, like I talked about, was just flowing, flowing day in and day out. Because what did I say two weeks ago? Nobody, but nobody came before God without blood. No one. So the Old Testament, day in and day out and day in and day out, there was only certain people that could come before God. Now we're under the new covenant. We all can come into the bold, boldly into the throne room in a time of need. Do you see these blessings? The Holy Spirit reveals Jesus to us. We all need the Holy Spirit. The blessed hope, the glorious appearing of a verse 13. Well, we wait for the blessed hope. See, the whole Bible talks about hope. In the New Testament, the hope is the hope in God. The hope in when we leave this earth, that we are locked into God's Spirit. It says in 1 Corinthians 6, 17, it says that we, if you are united with Christ, you are one with Him in the Spirit. I wonder how that looks. We can only know from the outside. We know what it looks like from, the, from how we are and, and how we know Him, but we are one with the Holy Spirit. We are one with Almighty God that lives in us. The third part of the, the third person of the Godhead, He is the one that's here revealing Jesus to us. It's amazing. If you get in the Word of God and you don't get what you're Get it? What he's saying? Say, reveal this to me. He's so willing for us to talk to him and reveal it to us. So we're waiting for the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to, for us to redeem us from all wickedness and to purify for himself, because we're the bride. See, we're being purified for Jesus. We're all going to have roles in heaven when we leave here. You know, so the big CEO in the company, he might walk with his head high now and have a great job. But if he doesn't have the Holy Spirit, he's not born of God. And so it doesn't matter how good it is for him here. Because when he leaves here, if nobody like you or I brings him the gospel of what Jesus died on the cross so we could be born again, because this is God's plan from the beginning of time. He knew it. He even says it in Revelation 5. It says the lamb that was slain before the foundations of the earth. Mm -hmm. So why the promise with Abraham? Why the law? And then why the cross? Why was it like that? Like I think to myself sometimes, why couldn't we just, why couldn't we just have Jesus? Why, why, did, why did all this have to happen? I mean, how many times did we say to ourselves, did Jesus really have to die on the cross for that horrific death? Yes, because his blood was sinless. He never ever sinned, but was tempted by all things. That's something I didn't say in the very beginning, but I'm going to say it now. If Jesus would have said no in the garden, when the angels had to come and strengthen him, because he was so weak and said to the Father, can this cup pass? 
the cup can't pass for us either. There is only one way. He had to go through. If he would have said no, we would have the Holy Spirit. Because only the Holy Spirit, what was prophesied in Joel, prophesied in Ezekiel that we were going to get a new heart, Ezekiel 36, 26, and 27, it says that we, God, way back in the prophets, God told them that we were going to get a new heart and a new spirit. This is like way back then. But what I'm saying is this was the only way we could have the Holy Spirit. Jesus had to say yes in the garden. If he would have said yes, we would be people without the Holy Spirit. It's so glorious to me. So glorious. He gave himself to redeem us from all wickedness, to purify for himself a people. We're the bride. Purify our purify for the people. Look, it says, himself a people that are his very own, eager to do what is good. Is that amazing? It's amazing to me. Thank you, Jesus. You went through the sacrifice so we could have the Holy Spirit. See, the promise came to Abraham. The Bible says in Galatians 3, the gospel was preached to Abraham. Way back at Abraham, the beginning, when God spoke to Abraham, way back then, why did the law come? If the promise of the promise of the Holy Spirit was coming, our inheritance is the down payment of the Holy Spirit living in us, why did the law come? You all might know this in the room. The law came so we could see Jesus. The law pointed to Jesus. The law showed every human that walked on the earth that they couldn't do it without God's power. See, when we get born again, we have God's power. We have God's peace. We made peace with God, it says in the Bible. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 1. Do you love the book of Ephesians? Yes. Wow, I love the book of Ephesians. Ephesians 1 is so powerful. So powerful. My gosh. Thank you, Jesus. I know it's right here. I'm going to read you something in Galatians. We're going to go to Ephesians 1, but I want to read this to you. In Galatians 3.13, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. It is written, cursed is everyone who is hung on a tree. Who hung on a tree? Jesus. Jesus. He hung on a tree for us. He took the curse. The curse, the minute that Adam and Eve sinned, the curse became on the land. The curse became on the people. Generational curses get passed down. The curses don't leave unless you renounce them. we got to pray that every curse that's been passed down, we renounce the curses. Yes, we've been redeemed by the curse of the law, Jesus. But Satan is a liar. He will try to put you in all the generationals, three to four generational back. And if you don't have knowledge, you'll perish. <coughs> You have to know what the Bible says. It says, He redeemed us in order that the blessing given to Abraham might come to the Gentiles, that's us, through Christ Jesus, so that by faith we might receive the promise of the Spirit. By faith, it's all the way back since Abraham. The promise, the gospel was preached to Abraham. And then Moses came with the law to show every human being that we could never do it without God's power. We needed something. What did we need? We needed Jesus Christ and his spirit to live on this earth, to overcome all the works of the enemy. Jesus came to destroy them, but we as the church have to know what the Bible says about what we have in Christ. What is our inheritance? Well, the Bible says, now we're going to get there, Ephesians 1.13. I love this. I know I'm still in Galatians. I'm not trying to confuse you. 
21. Is the law therefore opposed to the promise of God? Absolutely not. For if the law has been given, now listen to this. If the law has been given, it says that could impart life. Do we all understand tonight the Holy Spirit is the giver of life? He is the one that imparts life. So here it is, this one verse out of this whole Bible. Listen. For if the law had been given that could impart life, then righteousness would certainly have come by the law. We wouldn't have needed Christ. If righteousness means right standing with God, and it could have come by the law, it couldn't impart life. Because the law isn't a person. This is where we're going in 2 Corinthians 3 after Ephesians 1. Listen, we need life. The life of Almighty God lives in our hearts. This is powerful. It says, but the scriptures declare that the whole world is a prisoner of sin. That's verse 22. So then, so that what was promised, being given through faith in Jesus Christ, it all starts with faith through Jesus Christ, might be given to those who believe. Before this faith came, we were held prisoners by the law, locked up until faith shall be revealed. Faith in Christ. Faith in Christ to be revealed. I always think about those holy people. We're going to end there tonight. Don't let me forget. If I go to end, we want to go to Hebrews 11 before I end tonight. Galatians 3.26 I know we're going to Ephesians 1, but I'm hooked here now. <laughs> Listen, you are all sons of God. We're the bride of Christ. It freaks some men out. Yeah, you're the bride. <laughs> you may as well just say it. <laughs> but I'm a son. I'm a son of the Almighty God. I'm a son of God that moves in power. We are the bride of Christ that has an intimate love relationship with Jesus Christ. That's who we are. That's who we are. You are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek, Slave nor free, male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. In this room, connected by the Holy Spirit of God, we are connected to each other in the body of Christ. He is in us. We are in Him. And the Holy Spirit wants to reveal our inheritance, who we are in Christ, our identity, our identity in Christ. If you don't know your identity in Christ, you are lost. Because the walking in the Spirit is 180 of this world. That means it's the opposite of how the world does things. The kingdom of God does things in a 180. So if you don't know what the Word of God says and you get born again, you will walk around your life and be taken over by all kinds of things when you don't know how to rise up and praise, because that's a weapon of warfare, mm -hmm. to worship. To decree and declare the word. And the Holy Spirit, through us, as we do, do this, God comes and encounters us and sets us free. It's so powerful. So, because I'm still here, I have to um, just say this, jump down here. This was going to be later, but since I'm in Galatians. We're, we're at Galatians 4. I'm jumping down to verse 4. But when the time has fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law. See, Jesus was born under the law, bringing this great inheritance that he, he knew about when he was a young boy and he saw himself in the scripture. To redeem those under the law, that we might receive the full rights of sons. We are sons of God. And... and the thing is, is like, as I say this, not everybody is the son of God. Not everybody is the bride of Christ. We are children of Almighty God. We have this privilege that is so great beyond our comprehension. 
Because you are sons, God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts. The spirit who calls out, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a son. And since you are a son, God has made you also an heir. So we are an heir of God. We are co-heirs with Jesus Christ. We have everything that Jesus has. Every single thing that the Father has given the Son, He has given us through Him. Is that amazing? Is that amazing? So here we go. We're going to Ephesians 1. Here, It's just a couple pages over. In Him we were also chosen, verse 11. Having been predestined according to the plan of Him who works everything out in conformity with the purpose of His will. Everything, is, everything that we have is according to God's will. Even when we think He needs to accelerate our ministry or accelerate our call, it's in His timing. We are in the fire and He's refining us. He's refining me. He's refining you. That's what He does. Are we all in or not? we got to go through the fire. That's what it's about. This is the kingdom. Isn't it awesome? In Him we were also chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of Him who works everything out. Verse 12. In order that we, who were the first to hope in Christ, might be for the praise of His glory. And you were also included in Christ when you heard the word of truth. You have to hear the word of truth. The gospel of your salvation. It's the gospel of your salvation. The truth is the gospel of your salvation. It's all about your salvation. It's all about your inheritance. Once you say yes to the Lord and you're set free from the, the powers of darkness, you are now in God's kingdom to learn and grow and know Him. It says, Having believed, you were marked in Him with a seal. The promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance. See, if we don't have the Holy Spirit and the seal of the Holy Spirit on our hearts, God, we're not redeemed. We need the Holy Spirit. I'm not talking about the Holy Spirit baptized with the Holy Spirit. I'm talking about being born again, being washed, being renewed, coming into the promise of what God has for us. It says, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of his glory? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He puts a seal on our heart. It's the seal of the Holy Spirit. In Song of Solomon, it talks about that. It's Song of Solomon, chapter 8, verse 6. It's so powerful. He says the seal of his love, the seal of the Holy Spirit, is going to be put on our hearts. And it's not like we can't encounter this great love. He's the comforter. comforter. He's the counselor. He's the revealer of great love. The revealer of great love. We're under this new covenant, under Jesus Christ. There's so many churches all around the earth the people go in and out, and there's never any talk about the Holy Spirit. They don't even know the Holy Spirit exists. They don't even know that they can know Jesus at deeper and encounter His presence by the Holy Spirit. We have to talk to the Holy Spirit. It says in 2 Corinthians chapter um, 13, maybe verse 14, For the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, for the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit. We have to know that we got to open up our mouth and talk back to God through these scriptures. we got to open up our mouth and talk back to God. I have like six pages in here that I wanted to talk about tonight. Wow. We are a new creation in Christ. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5.17, every single time you see in Christ, with Christ, that's us. We are in Christ. He is in us. All the blessings, everything that we have in God is either in Christ or with Christ or through Christ. And if Christ isn't living in you, you don't have it. So powerful. Um, so we want to go to 2 Corinthians chapter 3. It's very powerful. It's all about the new covenant that we have. 
of the Holy Spirit. And God wants to reveal something to us tonight. God wants to reveal this to you. <clears throat> This is the word he has for everybody in the room. The hardest thing is starting to talk to him. Talking to him out loud. He's available 24-7. In the middle of the night, you can talk to him. He's longing for the people of God to talk to him. We worship We'll sing a song to him. We'll, we'll lift up our own prayers of need. But he said, I want the body of Christ, my bride, to talk to me. From the time you get up to the time you go to bed. And it doesn't mean all day. It means bring him into your every day. Bring him into your workplace. Bring him into when you're cooking a meal. Bring him into your life that you walk by the Spirit and not fulfill the lust of the flesh. That you speak to him. That you, I am a repenter. When I say something or do something that I know and have the conviction, because the Holy Spirit came to convict us of sin. The sin is that for all unbelievers is that they don't believe in Jesus. And then righteousness and judgment. The Holy Spirit is saying the judgment of Almighty God is coming on this earth. <laughs> If you do not have the Holy Spirit in you, you will never think about judgment. You will never think about the lake of fire. You will never think about things to come if the Holy Spirit isn't living in you. You just won't. You just won't. Nobody even wants to talk about everlasting life, eternal life, life with Jesus. What position are we going to have? What's, what's he going to assign us to? He already knows what we're going to be doing forever. Remember, the spirit of truth is living in us forever. We're going to get new glorious bodies. We're going to live with the almighty God. It's going to be a real place. The new heaven and the new earth is coming down here after the 1,000 years of millennium. We are going to have a place in the millennium. Then we're going to have a new live in the new heaven and the new earth. If the Holy Spirit isn't living in you, you won't even be thinking about the future. The conversation should come up. This great sacrifice should come up. Christmas comes. Easter comes. Who's talking about Jesus? That's what the holidays are about. Even unbelievers celebrate and spend more money at the holidays at Christmas. It's frustrating. <laughs> but so God, what God wants to, to say for the word tonight in this room is that we should take one step closer and say, Holy Spirit, I love you. Holy Spirit, show me the way today. Holy Spirit, help me know Jesus better. Holy Spirit, at my workplace today, show me somebody that I can give the gospel to and tell them that Jesus loves them with an everlasting love because he hung up on that cross and shed his blood so he can live in you and you can spend eternity in heaven. Start speaking to the Holy Spirit. I'm going to tell you, when I got this revelation years and years ago, and I started talking to him, he comes upon you. He's looking for a church, the bride, to speak to him. He lives in us 24-7. He never leaves. And the more you speak to him, and the more you praise him, and the more you talk to him about Jesus, you have revelation of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, our great bridegroom, the bread of life, the, the fountain of living water. You will know him, our great shepherd. You will know him. You will know him as judge. You will know him as king. You will know him as a bridegroom. You will know him and who he is, and you will be hungry. You will be hungry. When you start talking to the Holy Spirit, you will be hungry. You will be hungry. You will be thirsty. You'll want to get in the river of life. The minute something terrible comes your way or some obstacle comes in your way, you'll want to praise. You'll want to worship. You'll want to get in God's presence. Because when we're not talking about the Holy Spirit, we're not walking with the Holy Spirit. When we're not praising Him, walking in the Spirit is not to fulfill the lust of this flesh. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 2 that no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived what God has planned for those who love Him. Amen. 1 
1 Corinthians 2 9, 2 10 says, But God has revealed it to us by His Spirit. The Spirit, <coughs> do you hear me? What I'm saying? 10, verse 10. The Spirit, the Spirit, the Spirit, the Spirit of God that lives in us searches all things, even the deep things of God. Who wants to know the deep things of God? I do. He wants to reveal Himself to us. Wow. This chapter in 1 Corinthians 2 says that if you don't have the Holy Spirit, you don't even understand anything spiritual. It, it would be like a science formula or a math formula. You, know, you wouldn't understand. It would be boring. It, it would be, you would not be able to understand it. We must be born again to get the revelation of Jesus Christ. We must be born of the Spirit to get the deep things of God. It says in verse 13 here, This is what we speak, not in words taught by human wisdom, but in words taught by the Spirit. Are we talking about the Holy Spirit tonight? Amen. We can't know any of these things unless the Holy Spirit's teaching us. The Holy Spirit is the one that teaches us everything we need to know. If we read the Word and we're not understanding, we got to ask the Holy Spirit. Watch. It says, taught by the Spirit, expressing spiritual truths in spiritual words. Verse 14, the man without the Spirit does not accept these things that come from the Spirit of God, for they're foolishness to him, and he cannot understand them. We all need the Spirit of God. We all need the Holy Spirit. He, he's the revealer of all things to come. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14 I just read. The spiritual man makes judgment about all things, but he himself is not subject to any man's judgment. We will know what's going on in the world. It says a mature Christian, now listen to this, this will blow your mind in Hebrews. First time I read it years ago, I thought, well that's easy. Well that's darn easy. It says to be a mature Christian is to know the difference between good and evil. So when I first got saved, I thought, oh, well, that's easy. I guess I'm pretty mature. <laughs> but as the years have gone by, not what's always good is always God. Mm -hmm. right. wow. yes. So as you grow, your spiritual eyes start getting more sensitive to what is God and what is not. Mm -hmm. To know the difference between good and evil it's very, very, very powerful. So we're, we're going to 2 Corinthians chapter 3. We're talking about the Holy Spirit tonight. Well, I want to try to hit 2 Corinthians 3. Then I want to show you about these precious saints of old. Like there's nothing greater for me to look in the Bible and see these people. This is what makes me so happy. When I see these people of faith in the Old Testament, they didn't have the Holy Spirit like we have. See, we have so much greatness living in us. We have the Holy Spirit to guide us, to love us, to reveal Jesus' love, to encounter peace and power and all these things. They didn't have any of that. See, their eyes and their mind was on hope, a hope of everlasting life. This is so amazing their their hearts were fixed on the promise of the spirit their hearts were fixed on the promise of the spirit but they never saw it they never had the spirit like we have it it's so amazing when you learn the old testament and read there to see what they went through and god's grace has given us everything how sold out are we for this great inheritance Every day I say, I don't give them enough of my time. I don't. I can give them more. He deserves, he's so worthy. The Holy Spirit. We have the Holy Spirit. These people didn't have the Holy Spirit. Where was I going? Anybody Second Corinthians Spirit. Amen. Thank you for paying attention. <laughs> Second Corinthians chapter 3. I'll tell you, this chapter is so filled with power and anointing. The anointing is on this book, the whole book, but this 2 Corinthians chapter 3.
3, in chapter 4, in chapter 5. Oh, it's a whole, it's a, it's, it's a whole night of meat. I'm telling you, those three chapters are so powerful. Chapter 3, chapter 4, chapter 5. The glory of the new covenant. Verse 7. I'm going to jump back to 3. I can't. i got to start with verse 1. <laughs> you know why? Because I don't want you to miss anything. I truthfully don't want you to miss what God has here for you tonight. So beautiful. I hope that you're, I hope God's just imparting an impartation of His love tonight. That we would know greater things are in store for us when we leave this place. Even if we're living a sad life, even if we don't have everything that we have, when we have the Holy Spirit, we are rich, 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 rich. <laughs> are we beginning to commend ourselves again, or do we need, like some people, letters of recommendation to you or from you by everyone? Verse 3, you show that you are a letter from Christ. We are a letter from from Christ. See, we have the Word of God living in us, and we are a letter. We are God's letter, because His Word is written on our hearts. You show that you are a letter from Christ, the result of our ministry, written, now listen, not with ink, but with the Spirit of the living God. The Spirit of the living God writes God's Word on our hearts and minds. The Old Testament saints didn't have that. He writes his incredible, incorruptible word on our hearts and our minds. It's written, how? By the Spirit. Do we need the Holy Spirit? Oh yes, we need the Holy Spirit. Because we will not have God's word on our hearts. It says in Colossians 3.16, let the word dwell in you richly. Where is it dwelling? In our hearts and minds. This is powerful. Written by the Spirit of the living God, not on tablets of stone, like the law, remember? They were the great commandments. But on the tablets of human hearts, we have God's word written on our hearts. The spirit of God, we read the word of God. We read it, and then he writes it on our hearts. And then we read it again, and then he gives us another dimension. And then we read it again, and then when we share it, that's when it's really engraved. That's the key. See? People say, Tracy, how do you have so much word on your heart? Because when you share it, it's not only written when you're reading it, but when you share the word of God, it's written, it's a great, it's dwelling in you richly. God, he's the one that created us. And I always say to people, you think you encounter God through praise and worship? When you are sharing the word of God, there are jewels and treasures of the impartation of Almighty God in His glory and in His presence that you encounter when you share the word of God. I am telling you, it, but God is marking it out. We're all running our race, and He's marking it out. He's jealous for us. He's jealous for us. He's a jealous God that wants to spend time with us. So these are the jewels that I'm unlocking tonight. I'm unlocking tonight how it just, it just bursts in your heart. Here we are. Such confidence as this is ours through Jesus Christ, through Christ before God. Not that we are confident in ourselves to claim anything for ourselves. I have nothing apart from Christ. In John 15 it says, apart from Christ I can do nothing. I have nothing. This is Holy Spirit right now, flowing through me, bringing a fresh word in our hearts. This is the deep. I always say it. This is the deep. This is the deep. This is the deep. Our confidence comes from God. He has made us confident as ministers of the new covenant. That's all of us. Not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. What does that mean, the letter kills? The letter kills means that the Word of God is alive in our hearts. The letter, that was from the Old Covenant. We have the New Covenant. The letter kills. It's the law. 
It can impart life. It's the spirit of the living God that imparts this, uh, this incredible Zoe life that we live. Amen. Now if this ministry, now this is powerful, verse 7. Now if this ministry that brought death, the law, we needed life. If life could have came through the law, we, we wouldn't need the Holy Spirit. Which was engraved in letters on stone, came with glory. Because those Old Testament saints, man, they encountered God. They did. He came cloud by night, fire by night, cloud by day. They all came out. They didn't do anything but hang out and wait for God. <laughs> That's what they did. You know what I mean? They didn't have like a million things, you know, TV, Xbox, you know, all the stuff. You know, they hung out. Here he comes. He's following us. The cloud by day, the fire by night. What he's going to say, oh, Joshua's there, Moses is there, we're standing, we're waiting, we're get, waiting for a word. But no, we have the Spirit of God in our hearts. This is amazing. It says, Moses, because of its glory fading away, though it was, will not, will not the ministry of the Spirit even be more glorious? God's saying that that was fading away. Moses had a veil over his face. He was up on that Mount Sinai having an amazing encounter with God. You know, the glory was so strong on Moses. But when the people were disobedient, God said, I'm not going with you. I am not going with you. That's what he said. Moses said, I'm not going anywhere without you. I do not want to go in. He goes, how will anybody know? That's what Moses said to God. How will anybody know that we're different from everybody else if you don't go with us? Will we look like everybody else? Do we look like somebody different? Is somebody looking at us like we're something different? Do we have the glory of God on us? Do we have God's glory? He's in there. Said we're going to have greater glory. Moses, they couldn't even look at him because there was so much glory. But it was fading away because the new covenant was coming. The more glorious covenant of the Spirit. Wow. That's amazing. If that ministry condemns men is glorious, how much glorious is this ministry that brings righteousness? We can't be righteous in our own strength. It's the spirit of glory that comes on us. The spirit of holiness. It says in the Bible, Hebrews 12, it's not a popular scripture to preach. <laughs> Without holiness, no one will see the Lord. Whoa. Whoa, what does that one mean, Jesus? <laughs> Whoa, what does that one mean? You know, reading the word, I was like, wow, without holiness. Because God's holy and he lives in us. He's the Holy Spirit that transforms us into his glory. It says in this, at the end of this chapter that we go from glory to glory and he transforms us. It's the Holy Spirit. If you don't have the Holy Spirit, you can't be transformed into the glory of God, into his image. The glory, the glory, the glory, the glory of God. He's called the spirit of glory. He's called the spirit of holiness. He's called the spirit. He's the Holy Spirit. And if it was fading away, came with glory. And if it was fading away and it came with glory, how much greater is the glory of that which lasts? This glory is never going away. See, this is the new covenant. Jesus said in Hebrews, he's like, there is no, this is the last covenant. There's nothing more coming down the pike. Nothing else is coming. We have it all, but we don't know it all. We have everything, Him living in us. Therefore, since we have such a great hope, we are very bold. We are not like Moses who put a veil over his face to keep the Israelites from gazing at it while the radiance was fading away because we were going to have the greater glory. Who has given it to us? The Holy Spirit. John 15 says that if we abide in Him and His Word remains in us, we can ask whatever we want in Jesus' name, and he'll give it to us. There's a remaining in him. There's a staying. There's a longing. The Holy Spirit's jealous for our time. He's, the Holy Spirit's jealous for, for who we are and what we do. and He's jealous. He's a jealous God. 
I want as much of his presence and power as I can as I live on this earth. That's my goal. To follow Jesus, to live for him, to encounter God's power, presence, his word in power. That I would be transformed. That it could be like Peter. You're walking down the street and people are just slain in the spirit walking by you because you're filled with so much glory. See, God has that available for us. But I don't know of anyone that ever like walked by and people fell over. But it's available. You know, because the glory is so good. But their minds were dull. For to this day, the same veil reminds over the old covenant that's read. It has not been removed. It has not been removed because only in Christ it can be taken away. Even to this day, when Moses is read, a veil covers the hearts. Verse 16, listen closely. But whenever anyone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. There's a veil it talks about in 2 Corinthians 4. There's a veil that's taking away. And then the glorious gospel can just reside in our hearts. The Holy Spirit comes to live inside of us. He, re he reveals Jesus to us. He glorifies God. He's the glorifier of Jesus Christ. You want to enter into his presence as much as he can because he's in us. And he's filling us with his glory and the promises. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and wherever the Lord is, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we who with unveiled faces all reflect the Lord's glory are being transformed into His likeness with ever-increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. In other words, we're being transformed into the likeness of Jesus. Who gets up in the morning and desires to be more like Jesus? Who wants to be transformed in his image? Who wants to overcome sin and temptation? This is all through the Lord of glory. He transforms us. He breaks the power of sin. We talked about the blood and how he breaks the power of sin. We're always going to be tempted in this body. But God is more than enough to set us free. Amen. I want to go to, um, while we're here, time. Too bad we just can't have a three-hour <laughs> message, you know? I know. You're thinking, oh, my gosh. Let's go to Romans 8, and then we're going to finish the show. We're, we're going to go to Romans 8. I'm going to bring a little bit in Romans 8. I, I, I love to preach this whole chapter. Sometimes I just preach the whole chapter of Romans 8. The, chap, the, light, the, light, the message of this is called Life Through the Spirit. If you want to know more about the Holy Spirit, read chapter 8. Chapter 6 talks about us that we're dead to sin, alive to God through Christ Jesus. There's so much about being in Christ and the Spirit of God living in us. I could preach on this for three months straight and show you everywhere where it says the Holy Spirit is living in us and doing the work of God Almighty through us. Verse 1, therefore, there is no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus. This is a catch. There's no condemnation for us that's in Christ Jesus because we're not condemned anymore. See, we're all born into this life under the condemnation of God Almighty. Everybody is born under the wrath of God. Um, let's see. Romans 5, 9. John 3.18, all says that we were born under the wrath of God. Every single one of us for sin, but he gave us the solution, Jesus Christ. What a good, good father we have. It's like we're all born into that sin, but we come out. We come out on the other side. So the condemnation means that every single person is born in to the wrath of God. We've already start out as a precious little baby condemned. That you need a parent or two. <laughs> or an aunt or an uncle to say, hey, i got to tell you about Jesus. Listen, I saw a video the other night, an eight-year-old, maybe seven, standing in front of this church. It was so amazing. She was doing a message about being filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. She was the minister, <laughs> right? And every couple of minutes, she'd be, and then she'd get into her message. And I was bawling. I couldn't believe it. I said, you go, Lord. Yeah, eight years old. She gave the message about the Holy Spirit and power. 
and she'd speak in tongues and everybody would be roaring. Everybody got up out of the crowd. Everybody got up out of their seats. There was like hundreds and hundreds of people there. And she's giving them words. She's like seven or eight. She's speaking in tongues and, and the Holy Spirit, they were all like all, this eight-year-old. That's how simple the gospel is. That's how simple the gospel is. But the key is the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, that girl, that tiny, young, beautiful girl that was hysterical, I'll have to get the link and tell you about it next time so you can watch it too. She was amazing, filled with God's Spirit, loving the Lord. And you know what I thought? She must have had parents on fire, Amen. worship nights, seven nights a week, revival meetings on a regular basis, because that girl at seven or eight years old, she's going to be an evangelist. You know, Phil, and every couple of minutes, she was speaking in tongues, and there was like three or four other kids around her speaking in tongues, and everybody in the crowd is speaking in tongues and praising God, and it was amazing. So I don't know how I got off on that, but anyway. So the condemnation, that's what I was talking about. This is life through the Spirit. If you don't have the Holy Spirit, you remain under the wrath of God. It's very, very hard to see that every single human being has been born under that uh, condemnation. The wrath of God. The precious Jesus Christ shed his blood so we all could be saved. Does anybody love you more than Jesus? Not me. So here we go. Because through Christ Jesus, the law of the spirit of life set me free from the law of sin and death. So the spirit of life, there's his name. He's the spirit of life that set us free. For what the law was powerless to do, there we talked about the law. The law was powerless to bring life to our heart, bring life to our spirit. It says, but the law was powerless to do in that it was weakened by the sinful nature. That it was weakened by the sinful nature. God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful man to be a sin offering. The likeness of a sinful man. He came as a human being to lay his life down, shed his blood, so we could spend eternity in heaven. Hallelujah. And it gets much better than that. He gives us the Holy Spirit for everyone that asks. He gives us the Holy Spirit not only to be born again and filled so we can get on fire, that we have the Holy Spirit, that we become hungry and thirsty, then he wants to endue us with power from on high to do service. That we'll be talking about next week. We're going to be talking about the power and the experiences in acts that happen through the power of the Holy Spirit. So you have to know that when you are... When you are born again, that is for your own spirit, for you to know Jesus intimately and passionately. When you are born again, you are locked into the inheritance of heaven. When you are born again, you can be hungry and thirsty and get in the river and praise God. You will encounter God. You will be so hungry. You'll be able to share the gospel. That's just being born again. I don't mean just, but then you want to be endued with power. It takes you to know a level. But you've got to know Jesus intimately through the first well of water that we get when we get born again. It's so amazing. Here, verse 5. Let's see, verse 4. In order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fully met in us, who do not live according to the sinful nature, nature but according to the Spirit. I'll be talking more about the power of God in us. The sinful nature goes. When you spend time with God, the idols go. The things that you desire in the flesh go. I will tell you because I just know that the more time that you begin to know him, you want to please God. You want to please him. You want to repent when we fall out. You want to please God. You want to be more aware of his presence that we sang tonight. More aware of your presence. That we have to know it's like a dove sitting on our, our shoulder over here. That we know that even though we can't see him, he's in us. The minute we start having a conversation, his presence and power comes upon us. When we start having conversation. Verse 5. Those who live according to the sinful nature have their minds set on what the nature desires. But those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. 
See, God will release the kingdom mindset to you. God will release what's important. Like when you get to heaven and you get your rewards and you're, you're standing before God and he sees your life because he's omniscient, he's omnipresent, he's omnipotent, he's all-powerful, he's everywhere, he's all-knowing, he knows everything. So when you stand before him and you live a life that's pleasing unto God, he didn't miss anything, he sees my weakness, he sees me when I fall out, he sees me when I sin, but I live my life before him because I have the Holy Spirit that lives in me. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 3.16. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. It says in 1 Corinthians 6.19 and 20 that we've been bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. We've been bought with the... He's ransomed, ransomed, ransomed us back to God. We are fully redeemed. We are restored. We are justified. He's sanctifying us to get ready for the day of the great wedding supper. That we have to live our life before the Holy Spirit in everything that we do. I know this isn't a popular message for most people because people want to just live these desires. But I am telling you that whether you choose tonight to decide to live for Him, He sees everything, He knows everything, He's all powerful. It's the, I feel great about it. And it's hard. I feel great about it that He sees everything. Like, think about all that you, you invest in spending time with Him, loving on Him, loving on people, loving on the poor, loving in the prison ministry, loving on the homeless. Everything that we do for Him, He sees it. Nothing is going to go by the wayside. I didn't think that we had it, that He did enough for me. There isn't anything in this life that is greater than what it's going to be to be seeing Him face to face. He's a real person. Sometimes people are so far away from God that they don't realize He's not transcendent. He's right here. He's in this room. Amen. He's in all of us. We're connected together. This is good news. Yes. We are going to spend eternity in heaven with Almighty God. Amen. Gold streets, great food, <laughs> <laughs> big mansions. We're going to have great jobs. He's going to give us great authority. It's going to be so amazing, like how we get amazed by movies or the supernatural or all those things. We are going to be transported. We're going to be transported. We're going to be one place and we're going to be another place. It's going to be so glorious, but if we don't know what's to come and we don't meditate on what eternity is about, Revelation 19 is, brings the eternity message. So um, anyway, I know that it's time, so I'm going to end with Hebrews 11 and one verse. Uh, I, I, can't, I can't tell you enough about the Holy Spirit. I have to meet with you every night. <laughs> so much more. But I'm going I wanna, I wanna to finish with Hebrews 11. God is love, God is light. God is love and God is light. He wants to reveal His love and His light. It gives us wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of who He is. He wants to flood our hearts with His light. I know it's time, but I want you to go to Hebrews 11. And I want to end with this because... I'll tell you why I want to end with this. Because I read this this weekend, and I couldn't stop reading it. And then I read it again, and I read it again... And then I, I couldn't help but tell everybody that was around me. Because when we read something and it's, it imparts into our hearts and our minds, it starts bubbling over in our hearts. And we can't stay silent. And the Bible tells us not to stay silent. But here it is in Hebrews 11. Starting with verse 24, I had other things, but it's all about rewards and people keeping their eyes fixed. These are the great men and women of faith, Hebrews 11, that they wrote about all the Old Testament saints, everything that they did. Remember, they didn't have the Holy Spirit living in them. He was upon the prophets, and these precious people 
would encounter God by the fire at night and the cloud by day. They were so happy when he was around and it's not anything like what we have. By faith Moses, when he, grow, when he had grown up, refused to be known as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Pharaoh's daughter. He chose to be mistreated along with the people of God rather than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a short while. He regarded disgrace for the sake of Christ as greater value than the treasures of Egypt because he was looking ahead to his reward. By faith, he left Egypt, not fearing the king's anger. He persevered because he saw him who was invisible. See, Moses laid it all down and he was a great man of God in Egypt. Not a great man of God, but he was born into the Israelite family and there was a horrible killing that was going on and we all know the story. He got taken in, but you know, God had a plan for Moses. He waited 40 years, but he saw who was invisible. He didn't physically see him, he was invisible. But he knew Almighty God. And these precious saints in the Bible said they looked ahead to the country that they were going. They looked ahead to the rewards. I, I, I'm just going to paraphrase. In the ne very next couple verses, in the next page, it talks about a bunch of people that they're honoring. All these great men and women of God. Some were saved like Daniel and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Some of those got saved, but some were sawed in two. Some died for their faith. It's so powerful. One said, so that they might gain a better, better re resurrection. They would rather be tortured and refuse to be released because they were holding on to the better resurrection. It's like you read this stuff, and it's like, my gosh. They were destitute, persecuted, mistreated, stoned. The world wasn't worthy of them. They wandered in deserts and mountains and in caves and holes. Verse 39. They were all commended for their faith, yet none of them received what had been promised. None of them received the Holy Spirit. They waited. Abraham knew the promise of the Spirit. He knew the promise of Jesus Christ. They all waited and waited and waited for the spirit that was prophesied in Ezekiel, in Isaiah, in Joel, and we're going to pour out my spirit. But they lived for God anyway. They put their faith in him. It says, God has planned something better for us so that only together with us would they be made perfect. They would be made perfect in the Holy Spirit. I thank you, Father, for tonight. I thank you, Lord God, for this word. The Holy Spirit is alive. He is with us. We thank you, Lord, that if there's anybody in the room tonight, God, that would not know if they were saved, that they were not on the narrow road to heaven, that they did not know that they had the Holy Spirit because things of the Bible might be boring or things of the kingdom they don't care about. If they just can look at the fleshly things and not the things in the spirit. God, bring them forth tonight to the altar, Lord God. That they would repent and say, I need Jesus. I can't see him, but I love him. I can't see him now, but I'm filled with an inexpressible joy. I can't see him now, but I trust him. And that's the salvation of our souls. So, Father, I just pray, Lord God, that if somebody wants to be baptized with the Holy Spirit and fire because they want to live for you, they want to be endued with power, they want to have that heavenly language, God, that they want to repent, that they know, Lord God, that they've lived a different lifestyle, but they're all in now. They want to know what it's like to live in the Spirit, to live by your Spirit each and every day. If there's healing that needs to be taken... In Jesus' name. If there's healing that needs to be done, Lord, let it be done by Almighty God, by the power of the Holy Spirit tonight. Let backs be healed, necks be healed in Jesus' name. As we worship to this next song and people come to the altar, um, I just pray in the, in the mighty name of Jesus, God, by your Holy Spirit that's in this room. 
that when two or three are gathered in your name, Jesus, you are in our midst, oh mighty God, you are here, we worship you, we honor you, we say have your way in and through us tonight, God. We thank you, Lord, that miracles, signs, and wonders will happen here tonight, God. The greatest miracle of salvation, the greatest miracle, God, the Holy Spirit coming to, to, to lock us into our inheritance for everlasting life. God, let it be done according to your will. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Worship him with all you are. Let your heart be unlocked to his heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We love you, Father. What in it?